Hi, Carrie. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> We're here with Carrie Gallagher, and um, she, if you all have been watching the U.S. Championships, just finished third place in the Women's 1500. And we're just coming off of a fabulous weekend there and so excited um, to, watch, to have watched you race. And uh, just going to give a little background to our followers and fans. Carrie's been with us since last fall. And she's on our Hope Valet. And she's living or working and as a grad assistant at American University. And so, Carrie, we just want you to give us a little background about when you first came to Wazelle, what you were doing, and how the this year has been. Sure. Um, so prior to joining Wazelle, I was running uh, for Pacers New Balance Club team down here in Washington, D.C., and uh, that's where I started getting coached by Coach Matt Centrich, which is ultimately the reason why I came down to the area in the first place. Um, but I was working with him as his assistant coach, and running for him and had started grad school last fall. So um, all those three things were taking up quite a bit of my time and um, was learning how to juggle. And I think I was starting to get it figured out right around the time that um, I got connected with you guys. And so um, started, you know, in the fall doing some road races and got, got the ball rolling a little bit. And uh, it's been a great year so far being a bird. <laughs> yeah, it has. Oh my gosh. We're so happy to have you on board with us. This is, this weekend was so awesome. It kind of feels like we're still pinching ourselves from the race the other day. I can't yeah. even imagine how you're feeling coming off of that. Um, I was going to say, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Back to Rosalind and, and, you know, just being back here, I was like, did that happen? Is that real? <laughs> yeah, I bet. So, so you've got to be pumped about that. Can you talk to us just a little bit about you know, your plan going into the final on Sunday and racing with some really big names and um, really showing up and having, I think, probably the race of your life. Yeah. I mean, it's it. all the races this year, I feel like, have kind of led to this point. Um, in the prelim, I was in, um, I mean, all the heats were, were good, but I think we had a pretty deep heat and so um, it ended up being a pretty fast race and it led me to a PR actually yeah. um, but coming out of that heat with an automatic qualifier gave me a lot of confidence coming into the final um, knowing that if I was in a good position um, with a lap to go then then I can make a good run for it and so you never know what's going to happen on race day especially in a championship race and so I was ready for something fast but I was also ready for it to go slow um, knowing that Two years ago in the, the final, it, we basically did the same thing, except even a little bit slower to start. So you got to have to be prepared for everything. And like I said, there were some big names in that race, and, and 1500 is a really um, deep field here in the U.S. now, and so you can't take anybody for granted. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess the way, from our perspective, the way the race played out is you sort of sat in the back for the really the first 1200, and then at our little cheer section and that last 400 stretch, we were going crazy. And that's sort of when you pulled ahead and decided to take the lead. What was, what was going through your head when that happened? Oh my gosh. Well, I ended up in the back, um, not intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> you don't normally go straight to last on purpose, <laughs> but sometimes you end up there and you just kind of have to roll with it. And, um, what was unique about the way we were running is we were so bunched up and so close together that I was never really that far away from the front. So that gave me a little bit of comfort. So, you know, as long as, as long as we weren't stringing out and I wasn't getting gaps, um, then I was happy to just kind of stay calm and, and let the race happen. And any jostling I wanted to stay away from and I wanted to stay on my feet and, and finish the race. So, um, as long as it was 600 to go, I, I felt like I was in a good position. Then I, then I was okay. And that's, um, kind of how, how it worked out. I had to swing a little bit wide to move up a, a bit, but then that kind of set me up to just swing wide again with about 500 to go and, and just take off and, you know, go for it. So it's kind of, I was feeling good, but I mean, it was, uh, it was an interesting feeling coming into that 500, you know, like, do I go? Do I not go? You got to go. If you're, if you're thinking, just go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then 
I guess coming into the back stretch, you had some people challenging you big time. It must have, you know, taken everything you had to just hold them off right at the end there. Yeah, I mean, at that point, and I thought, and I, I've kind of visualized that kind of finish for a number of different races, and I'm like, if I'm not going all out in the last hundred, um, then, you know, I'm not doing something right. So, you know, if people were, if someone was going to go by me, I wanted to make sure there was nothing more I could do at that point. You know, if I'm, I wanted to be up all in at that point. And so I was happy I was able to hold off because um, we had a lot of closers in that race. And it was, it was incredible that, you know, as many as 10 of us were, were pretty much going for all four spots, you know, oh right at the same gosh. time. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was, pretty, it was pretty great. That's awesome. Yeah. It was pretty great from our, <laughs> our little steeple pit corner of the, the, the uh, stadium. We exploded <laughs> with noise and cheering and jumped in the air and, couple folks around us were like who are these <laughs> ladies and why are they going so crazy but yeah congratulations well, if they didn't happened. know they now know yeah <laughs> yeah right. exactly right. so we another thing that we thought that people would want to know about you Carrie is that coming out of Fordham graduating um what you weren't planning on continuing running so what led you to starting to run professionally? Like what in your mind, what changed your mind? And then what, what was that next year like? Sure. Um, so I graduated college and I had accepted a position at Morgan Stanley. It was all ready um, for that nine to five, 90 minute commute into Manhattan and then 90 minutes back home. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I did that for two months, but what, and I hadn't even thought about running post collegiately and I um, wasn't really aware of what that was like, that that was even an option for me. And I sat down with my high school coach um, after I graduated just to kind of catch up on college and, you know, see how things were going. And he actually is good friends with my co my coach now, Matt Centritz. Uh, they both went to Power Memorial together. Mm -hmm. and, or I guess they, they were never at school together, but they're both alum and it's a very tight group. And so they've been good friends many, many years. And uh, I guess Coach Centritz had spoken to him about me possibly coming down to the training, but didn't want to put a new professor on it. Um, so we wanted Coach Levitt, my high school coach, to present it to me. So we're sitting down at the Harbor Light. It's actually during, uh, it must have been during the U U.S. Championship. Because I remember we were watching it on the TV and, and you know, he kind of opened it up like, like, oh man, you know, how great racing. How, how cool would that be to be there? <laughs> um, and so we were, you know, talking about it. And then, he's, and then he kind of, you know, let me know that this opportunity was available. And so I, you know, at that point, I, I hadn't even thought I would ever consider that. Right. But it kind of, like, planted the seed, and it just kind of stuck there. And thought about it for a couple of days, and I was pretty much convinced, you know, I, I need to give this another shot. I don't, I don't know what it was. I don't, I didn't have, um, I didn't, like, have the college pedigree to, you know, suggest I should continue running. But I don't know. It's just a feeling like whether it's my own personal performance or maybe there's just something in D.C. that I need to go do I, I need to go down there so um very unexpectedly i decided to start running and move to run with coach centrus yeah wow that is such a great story mm -hmm. and we have we have so many team members that are new this year and we had a um a flock member that came out all the way from connecticut to cheer on um our hope valet this weekend what would what would your advice be to the people in that group or other fans out there who ha still have running in their heart and um, just want to sort of decide if they're going to make that commitment or not. Yeah, I mean, I can relate to that position really well, mm -hmm. um, having been in the committed to work and thought I was ready for that next step because that's what everybody did. Um, but whatever it is that you want to do, so, so running, if, if you want to continue running for whatever motivates you, um, I would just say you have to go all in and you have to be 100% committed to that and, and believe that what you're doing is what you need to be doing then. And it, that doesn't mean that you're, you know, going to make an Olympic team or you're going to, you know, whatever the end result is going to be, you have mm -hmm. to just believe that that's what you should be doing and you're going to be getting some great experiences and you're going to be touched by people along the way and hopefully touch a few lives yourself along the way and you can just be all in for that and, you know, if you're on that on the cusp of deciding between a job and running or whatever, the, whatever's pulling you in two different directions, if it's not the running, you can still have that in your life. But just know what it is that 
um, is fueling, you know, your passion or your desire and, and, and give it your best. So, you know, it doesn't have to be one or the other, but I think you do have to prioritize and, and really just commit and, and, and love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's it. That's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we're, we are so excited for you and so proud of you and everything that you've done. And we can't wait to see what's up next for you. Um, and so we'll okay. be following you this summer. Yeah. Um, On that note, just give us a little tidbit about your summer and your summer racing plans, um, so we can maybe jump in your suitcase along with you. <laughs> sure. Well, so I'm gonna be flying out to Europe Fourth of July. I'm gonna celebrate America by saying see you later. For a <laughs> um, and I'm gonna go race in Italy on the 7th, and then I've got two races in Belgium before I come back on the 19th, so a um, couple shots at, at getting that standard over there, and then um, we'll see after, after that point. If I still need it, I'll, I'll keep chasing until I have to. <laughs> That's great. Well, if we can't get in your suitcase, we'll be cheering for you. Um, <laughs> you can at least, you know, on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much, Carrie. It was great catching up, and uh, yeah. we're excited for you and everything that's coming up. Great, great. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, okay bye. Bye. bye.